In this video, we're talking about how to use double angle identities. And in this particular problem, we're going to be using double angle identities to prove that this equation is true. So on the left hand side currently, we have sine of 4 theta. On the right hand side, we have 4 sine theta cosine cubed of theta minus 4 sine cubed theta cosine of theta. And remember that double angle identities are formulas like these ones, identities like these ones, where we have sine of 2u. So in other words, an angle normally would be theta. We'd have 2 times the angle. So we have a double angle. That's why it's called a double angle identity. And we can reduce that or simplify that using this identity into something that doesn't include a double angle, but just the angle itself. So for example, sine of 2u is equal to 2 sine of u times cosine of u. So right away here with this problem, even if we weren't told that we were supposed to use double angle identities, but we wanted to prove this, we would know that double angle identities would be a great place to start because we have here sine of 4 theta. So we really have a double, double angle in this 4 theta. And over here on the right hand side, all of our angles are just in terms of theta. So a good path to proving this equation, in other words, to getting the left and right hand sides to be exactly equal, would be to reduce this angle from 4 theta down to 2 theta, and then down to theta, and see if we can get it to match the right hand side. So if we start by just working on the left hand side, we won't even bother rewriting the whole right hand side. We'll just deal with the left here. Sine of 4 theta we could rewrite as sine of 2 times 2 theta. So we just factored out a 2. Obviously, 2 times 2 theta is 4 theta. So we haven't changed the value of the angle at all. But now we've got a 2 pulled out in front. So what we really want to do at this point is we want to match up this 2 theta right here to u. Because u has a 2 pulled out in front of it. And here, in our case, 2 theta has a 2 pulled out in front of it. So now that we've identified that u is equal to 2 theta, we can plug u into the formula in these two spots. So when we do that, we'll rewrite sine of 2 times 2 theta as, working on the right hand side of this formula here, we'll rewrite it as 2 sine of u, and in our case u is 2 theta, times cosine of u, so cosine of 2 theta. Now we can simplify this even further. Both of our angles are in terms of 2 theta. We want to get them down to theta. So this time we will pretend here that this theta is u right here and we'll plug it in here and here for u. So when we do that, we're going to leave this 2 out in front. Sine of 2 theta using this double angle identity is going to become 2 sine of theta cosine theta. So 2 sine of theta cosine theta because we said that u was equal to theta. Now we have to multiply that by cosine of 2 theta. But we want to reduce cosine of 2 theta using the double angle identity for cosine. So in this case, we're going to say that we have cosine of 2 times theta, just like we have cosine of 2 times u. And we're going to replace u here and here with theta. So when we do that, cosine of 2u becomes cosine squared of theta minus sine squared of theta. Now if we simplify a little bit, we can multiply this 2 by 2 here, and we'll call it 4 sine theta cosine theta multiplied by cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. So that's our left hand side. We've got all of the angles in terms of just theta. So let's work on the right hand side and see if we can get it to match this left hand side. Well, the right hand side right here, the first thing that we can do is rewrite these cosine cubed theta and sine cubed theta functions as cosine of theta times cosine squared of theta and sine of theta times sine squared theta. So here's what that looks like. We'll keep the 4 sine theta right here, so 4 sine of theta. Now cosine cubed, that's just cosine times cosine times cosine. So we can group two of those factors together, and we can leave one alone, and so we can say cosine theta times cosine squared theta. If I multiply these two together, I'm going to get back to cosine cubed of theta, but right now I've just got them split apart. I'm going to split apart the sine cubed in the same way. So we're going to keep our minus 4, and then we're going to rewrite sine cubed as sine of theta, sine squared of theta, and we're keeping our cosine theta. 
Now what I want to do is keep the left hand side the same and on the right hand side here I'm going to factor out a 4 sine theta cosine theta. So notice here that I have 4 sine theta cosine theta and here I have 4 sine theta cosine theta. So both terms include a factor of 4 sine theta cosine theta. So I can pull that out in front and when I remove it from this first term, I'm just left with the cosine squared of theta. When I remove it from the second term, I'm just left with the sine squared theta. So I get minus sine squared theta. And now what you can see is that the left-hand side and the right-hand side are exactly equal. We have 4 sine theta cosine theta here, 4 sine theta cosine theta here and cosine squared minus sine squared, cosine squared minus sine squared. So the left and the right hand side match each other exactly, and that's how you can use double angle identities to prove that an equation is true. Could you use some extra help with math? Click the button to head over to calculusexpert.com. It's where I've collected and organized all of my best resources, including exclusive videos, notes, quizzes, and even formula sheets. It's the perfect resource whether you're struggling, or if you want to take your learning further, or even if you just want to save yourself some time studying. So check it out, because I know it'll help.